actually going now. We are. We are going. Oh. Lots of questions about repressing old album vinyl. There are plans to repress the old albums um, in order. So it's going to start with the green album. And I think that, that I'm going to say that's probably not going to happen till next year. But it's definitely the first one up and then the brown album and so on, you know, until people get fed up with us. But that's definitely um, that's definitely the plan. And I noticed somebody ask, will there be, you know, exclusive bits and pieces? That's the sort of thing we're talking about now, isn't yeah, it? Like, one, yeah. You know, I, for me, I, you know, vinyl, I would say will just be as as it was because it was always always full anyway. We could never squeeze any more on the vinyl. We always yeah. used to get what we could on two vinyl. Uh, CD, however, I would definitely put all the singles that came just before each album that feel like they're Ooh. a part of it. You know, like Omen, Omen remixes, B sides, that kind of thing. All of those kind of things I would put on a CD. To go with that album, yeah. To make the CD, you know, uh, an interesting prospect. Some as cheeky well. little remixes coming in as well. I was what? Did you hear that one? Well, still cued idolatry by these guys. Guys out in Detroit. I think I did. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty good. I just had another one from "Are We Here" by Maggie that you haven't heard yet. I haven't heard that. Came in fresh last night. There you go. So all this Some stuff. Cheeky could... little, uh, cheeky little remixes are coming through. Yeah, all this stuff could well end up um, certainly on CD. Vinyl, though, I think that'll probably just stick to you know original version um you couldn't fit any more on the vinyl anyway no you? that's what that i was saying earlier yeah. Yeah. yeah uh well will you ever release a studio version of halcyon with belinda carlisle and bon jovi the short answer is no i don't think so um i think it did get released once didn't it we're, we're, well a live version this uh, is saying a studio versus asking okay, about a right, studio right, version specific, philip yeah. read, right. read the small print right. um it's I just, I just don't think so. I think it's a live thing. It's a thing. It's, it's a thing for live. How about spicy? However, I would like to release that. That's something that we are asking the Spice Girls very politely whether we can release that. We are yet to find out an answer. So we're in a holding pattern on that one. But until then, you will be able to hear spicy when we play live. You know, another fun live only thing at the moment. Lots of Christians playing. How do we get Orbital to play near where we live? Well, you go to your local promoter and petition them to get Orbital to play so that they can put their hands in their pockets and you don't have to, apart from when you want to buy a ticket, of course. But, um, you know, that would be all I can think of. Get get your local promoter to, you know, we, we go where we're invited. Promoters come to us and say, will you come and play here, you know? And that kind of thing, you know. If you could do it a tour, it's a little bit different. You kind of go to the promoters and say, "Will you have us?" But basically, you know, when we string a tour together, we have to kind of wend our way in a sensible fashion across the country. So you know, it, it comes out slightly different every time, doesn't mm. it? Try and cover all areas, but it's not always possible. No, no, it's not. It's not. You know, unfortunately, you do have to travel sometimes. But we do try and get at least you know a nice wiggly line from north to south that corner um, it was quite interesting this year we got a cornish festival we just did we i don't remember if that was announced yet <laughs> but there was a cornish festival wasn't there it's we fairly don't get, ambiguous we don't, we don't normally get festival. down there at all actually and it's really nice to uh be able to be playing down in that area that's sort of yeah 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 the closest west we've kind of been doing our own gig is bristol it's, isn't it which is always a fantastic gig isn't it yeah always sells out but it, yeah we love bristol yeah yeah, we do. When you work together, who does what? Do you compose together, etc.? Is that say etc.? I think that says etc. Yeah. Uh, generally, when when we work together, I'm generally the writer. I write the music, and then we produce the tracks together. That's generally how it's worked. Not always. There there are tracks where Phil's come in and written a top line, and it's gone whoa and slipped in there, and then it kind of turns into the thing that it it. it is like choice for example that was a good one of them yeah. um are we here as well that the sort of luscious ending part of that was was one of yours on the jupiter six mm. i believe that uh, ding oh, ding ding that oh, bit. I did that. yeah you did yeah, oh, I, yeah I know you can't even remember oh, can you no, I can't. 
But um, um, but this album though we did it was we wrote it definitely separately. Oh yeah, this album was different. Lockdown, yeah. lockdown was uh, we were locked down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, you know, all together with all the new compositions and all the various formatting madness that goes on nowadays. Um, I think you did four, I did nine, didn't you? And then they've all been yeah. juggled around with various deluxe editions and that kind of thing. Very Rush. different approach. Yeah, yeah, a different approach for different times, you know. This is Lush 3.1 and Lush 3.2. Is there a fun fact about the release that you can share? Um, About this release? Well, a fun fact about Lush. Well, it was started in a bedroom in Dunton Green. <laughs> My friend Clive came in and went, oh, that's Lush, that is. <laughs> that's why it's called Lush. Um, that's a fun fact, I think. It makes me yeah. laugh every time I think about why it's called Lush and Clive for yeah. coming in saying that. The video was a, 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 a no, slow-mo sort of version of a car boot sale. Wasn't it, it, it wasn't was a like... version of a car boot sale. It was a real car boot oh, sale. Oh, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> Slow-motion version, I mean. Yeah, it was like how, how a car boot sale can be beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure if it worked. But, <laughs> um, but then it was finished. The track was finished. In our studio, oh, right. the, the, the new studio in um, the strong room in Shoreditch, it was it was started in Dunton Green. Then we moved Orbital to London uh, just after the or just before we went on tour with Meet Beat Manifesto on the communion tour in America, and then came back and hit the ground running with the Brown album, and that's where Lush was finished, wasn't it? In the, in our sort of um, studio upstairs. on the stairs in the strong room. Half upstairs, yeah. That's a fun fact. Yeah, which artist would there. you like to remix this release? Oh, I'm. I, I think if you ask me that, I'm just going to say Soul Wax for every answer about remixes because I really like Soul Wax remixes. I think they really put in the time. You know, if you're talking about an artist that's never done this before, you know, I would go Soul Wax. Where would you, where would you go? Oh, well, you put me on the spot there. I did. Well, you don't have to answer. I don't know. I don't know. It's sort of, well, I he's asked me pleasure. anything. I thought I'd just ask. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, not, no, I haven't got an answer for that at the moment. Kate Bush? Not immediately. That's my stock. Did she do remixes? No, but that's my stock answer oh, for most okay. things that to do with other artists. Um, <laughs> will we see all the back catalogue on the streaming services? Yes. We're trying to get the back catalogue on the services because, uh, you know, now we're reunited with um, Because and London and our back catalogue. We are working hard to get all that out. Um, it's a bit slower than I would like. I think it should just all go in one big go. Um, but I think I think the record company like doing one release at a time. I just think we should just hammer it and just hit the hit the streaming services with everything that's unreleased. We've got it all there. Um, it's ready to go, isn't it? I, we did do the Radicio EP and forgot the Naked and the Dub. Got completely left out. Dub versions getting left out. Can you imagine? Um, but it's um, yeah, it, it will all appear. It will all appear. Probably even the um, mysterious untitled track from the Green Album cassette version, mm. which is um, I thought we were saving that. Yeah, saving it. What are we saving it I for, Phil? I don't know. For the Green release. For what? For the Green release. Green release. Old. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely on the CD. Um, what is the star story behind the rhyme and reason vocal mix of Satan? Simply, we met rhyme and reason through the shaman, didn't we? Yeah. Totally. And yeah. And they came round one night and wanted to do a rap over it. Didn't yeah, they? yeah. We that just thought, we liked them because at the time they were one of the few UK rap. This is going to sound weird now. They were one of the few UK rap artists that actually rapped with a British accent and not mm. a sort of fake American accent, which I was never understood and didn't like. And so um, that was our reason, you know, apart from the fact they were two lovely blokes as well. And, uh, you know, and Lex also Introduced told us where to get the torch, torch glasses. glasses. Yeah. So, you know, we had seen them before in the film Brazil. Um, Robert glasses. De Niro wears them, doesn't yeah, yeah. he, as, as he's... Um, plumbing terrorist yeah. but you know didn't think to didn't put the two and two together and then lex you know sowed that seed and we went on tour in america with meat beat manifesto again i feel like i'm going around in a circle yeah. but and that was you know you, you could get them in new york yeah space age gifts five dollars yeah what's your favorite mm. 
What's your favourite place in the world to get away, unplugged and recharge your spirits? Generally, the countryside, I'm going to say it's a bit boring. It may be, but it, any countryside is really nice. Preferably if it's got a really nice little pub that sells real ale. <laughs> it's, I'm narrowing it down now. Um, possibly some Morris dancers. <laughs> and I'm there just in time to still, you know, order dinner and that kind of thing and, you know, get get something vegetarian, you know, something like that. That would be nice. The Isle of Wight as well. I love the Isle of Wight. You know, it gets bad. It gets a bad rep, but I I, I like the Isle of Wight. What I just you? need some sun. I just need sun somewhere it's nice and warm and hot. Maybe some sea to cool off in. But that's, you know, I haven't got any particular place that's my favourite place. You like Greece, don't you? Yeah, I like Greece, but that's because... Uh, I know people there. Mm. <laughs> they go there. Yeah, yeah. So it's yeah, like anywhere. So anywhere. Yeah, I like I like Greece. Anywhere no, it's yeah. the sun, really, to be honest. Mediter I, Mediterranean. Yeah. I love Croatia. Went to Croatia a while back. That was beautiful. Went to Mexico. That's pretty good. Fair enough. Yeah, I have to say, a Greek island is definitely tipping the favour oh, yeah, with me at the minute good. over the Isle of Wight. But yeah, uh, yeah. that's maybe the weather. But anyway... <laughs> What have you learned from each other over the years? <laughs> he taught me everything I knew about being a naughty teenager when I was little. Um, he was my hero when I, I was four years younger than him, so I believed everything he said. What I've learned is not to believe everything he says anymore. Um, yeah, but I, you know, yeah, no, he it taught me a lot. No, what do I, say? I don't lie to you. Do I? No, you're just wrong. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you're a wrong one sometimes. Don't, I don't <laughs> I'm not saying you lie. I'm not saying this is right, do I? I'm not saying you're going, right. no, we've no, got to no, do but, this. But when you're... Like, when we've you're... got to do this, this is a good idea. And no, it's, sometimes it's not. Yeah, Cause yeah. Because I, I leap before I look. Yeah, but when you're when you're really young and innocent and you believe everything people that seem older than you say, you, that's what I mean, you know. It was a shock to find out Sharp that you could be wrong. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah, you know. Uh, to be fair, that was something I taught myself. But um, <laughs> you know, everything else I give over to you. <laughs> but um, it's, it's what have I learned from you? Uh, be patient, I suppose. <laughs> How's that going? How's that working out for you? <laughs> Still haven't been able to manage it. <laughs> Is there anyone you'd like to remix? Oh, you know the answer to this already. Yeah, Kate Bush. Kate Bush, of course. Jesus, anything from the there dreaming. <laughs> Oh, you want to remix? Yeah. All oh, right. Oof. Yeah, I would definitely remix anything from the dreaming. That that would that would work for me. Did you have any say on all the different formats of the new album? Not really, really no. Because the the You're way it looking. works now, there's so many different angles that record companies have to adhere to with all the different people like Amazon, Apple Music, think, you know, Apple Music want you to do um, the surround sound. I can't even remember the name of it. This is Atmos. Um, Atmos, Dolby, Atmos mix and things like that. Um, Amazon wants some exclusive tracks. And so the record company, you know, our hands are tied to whatever the record company want to do with the format. Uh, I mean, we, you, I said, you know, you could, you could argue about it, I suppose, but trying to keep the whole ship going in a nice positive mm. fashion, mm. you kind of, everybody's trying to keep everyone else happy, but I know all the different formats can upset the fans and mm. I'm, I apologise for that. I, we will try and do something next time that will somehow appease that, that will somehow please everybody all at the same time. <laughs> Us, the fans at each end, and the record company and all the different services and streaming services in the middle because I, I feel like it's getting out of hand. Yeah, I do. I, do, it, I don't I like do it. I think that next time we've got to focus on a little bit more on that because uh, we we didn't too much. No, no, on no, this no. Release because uh, you know my assumption is but this is what everybody's got to do. Oh. You know, but and I'm sure everybody's got fans who get peed off with them for 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 all the different formats. All of these songs will appear on the streaming services soon enough. Do you know what I mean? It's not going to be long and they'll all be there anyway. You'll be able to hear all these different tracks. Mm. Uh, but I know people like to collect, you know, versions and that kind of thing. Uh, as far as vinyl goes, we could we, we max the vinyl anyway. So, you know, you, you can't 
Well, I suppose you could do triple vinyl, couldn't you? But mm. we go for quality and not put too much mm. on the vinyl, but definitely room on CDs, obviously. Anyway, we will concentrate on getting that. So the different formats, just looking at that again, because obviously there was, you know, it was getting a bit, of, it does need to get handled on that a little, lot more. Yeah. But you guess, you, you know, someone else is asking, can you get the bonus tracks on oh, streaming the streaming services? Yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah. You, you will be able to get them. It, it, you, there's going to be a little embargo time, but you will be able to get them. Favourite venue in the UK? Oh, that's... that's... Well, it, you know, sadly, my favourite venue in the UK was Brixton Academy, um, which is now, you know, going through quite a, an awful time after a horrific experience. Mm. You know, let's see how that pans out because that's not looking good. Hammersmith one's good, though. Where we, that's where we. Hammersmith is also is is where is my new favourite. Yeah, I I love I do love Hammersmith. Well, I, I always call it Hammersmith Odeon. I know it's the Apollo, but he took me to my first gig there when I was about twelve to go and see Split Ends, um, and bought me a vodka and bitter lemon. Corrupted him. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Um, I didn't do anything. I don't know what didn't know what all the fuss was about, but um. Should have given you, know. you a double. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I like the Barrowlands. I must say. I mean, Barrowlands is good fun. There are loads of brilliant. There are <laughs> loads of brilliant venues in most major cities that we played in, and it's, it's you know, and you can say you know, I prefer the old the theatrical ones and the ones with a bit of history rather than the uh, municipal council sports hally type ones. Really, people have got no soul really, but. Uh, it's all down to the people as well, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Course, I quite like. I always well, enjoy you know, Manchester. The... They've got some great venues. Yeah. There. What's that old theatre one? Uh... Other oh, ones. Yeah, the Apollo. Oh, I can't remember. They're all like. Uh, is that, that's another Apollo, I think. Isn't I it? think it is actually with yeah. a really crazy pub around the back. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, yeah that's brilliant. the one. Yeah, you can run out the back yeah. door and get a pint. <laughs> and the Barrowlands. <laughs> I will go back to the Barrowlands. It's bonkers, but mostly because the uh, security people there, they're just like so. The Barrowlands yeah. Road crew. Yeah, and yeah something they, else. The banter there is brilliant. I just love it. Um, I wonder if they still play football after the load is <laughs> <laughs> in the venue. Um, um, Bristol, actually, Bristol O2 is pretty good as well because it feel, to me it always feels like the industrial zone in the Crystal Maze, <laughs> you know, and everyone's really cl everyone's really close to you and right up and all around you. That's a good one. Any plans? And, you know, and a historic Sorry. album tour. Is it that time? Historic it's that time yeah, to play the whole of an album in its entirety. Historic album, you know. Too. Yeah, I don't well, know. Which album would you choose, though? Well, most people either go for, you know, their favourite one or the one that was the the biggest, um, or they just start at the first one and and go through. You know, like Craftwork did that series mm. of doing every album they they'd done, one after the other in a in a row every night. Um, crazy, right. but that's an idea. You know, if I was going to do one, I don't know. I, I, if I was going to do it, I'd quite like to start at the beginning because I think it'd be, it'd be interesting because to play those track, all those tracks from, say, the Green album that you've never played live, that you haven't touched since you were like twenty-two or whatever, would be really unusual mm. juxtaposition. It'd be like working with yourself and remixing with a younger version of yourself. It would be an, an interesting thing. I don't think I would do it though. So that it sounds absolutely note perfect for the the record. Do you know what I mean? I well, think you may as well play the record. Yeah, exactly. I think you'd, you'd have to like play around and 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 what put your we, put your older wisdom self on top of it. We did a gig of all the ten albums. I'd need the loo. After, well, I know that after about yeah, one album. Into, into, you know, people yeah, buy ice cream. Yeah, that'd be a long gig. Well. Oh. Be a long old gig, be literally like doing a festival with just one band. I don't know, I'm not sure if I'm up for that. Is there a person you'd love to collaborate with? Do you know the answer? Do you know my answer to that, Phil? Calvin Harris. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, I don't you know, I sorry, I Calvin, you I wouldn't cur. mind. He's a lovely you fella. Yeah, yeah, it begins with a curse. <laughs> Kate Bush, isn't it? Oh yeah, you know, nice. I'd love to do a track with Kate Bush. Yeah, um, would love to have done one with Scott Walker, but um, that sadly can never happen. Um, what about you, Calvin uh, Harris? Cal, yeah, mind. Nice boy. 
I've got no desires uh, that come spring to mind. No desires to collaborate with someone? No. Madonna? Oh, well, may you say that. Uh, <laughs> Abba? <laughs> I don't know. I'd do any of them. Um, what music do you prefer to listen to, Phil? What do you mean? That's do a I, question for you. Electronic. I like, uh, name a few interesting music. Uh, well, I like, like, uh, my go-to record label is Dirty Bird at the moment. Uh, Claude Von Stroke and lots of other people are, uh, on his uh, really good record label. Great Groove, I'm really enjoying that. Uh, Extra Vault, uh, it's a German techno duo, I'm really enjoying them. Uh, it's a couple. Uh, right, pain. <coughs> well, with Dirty Bird record label, you've got loads of people, loads of producers and DJs that are on their compilations, and I think pretty much all of them are pretty good standard and like I said I like the groove I'll just repeat myself now uh, my Thank current you. listening is the new Anna B Savage album in flux um, what else Richard Dawson I like Richard Dawson he's a wild card um, I haven't got into his new album yet. I keep meaning to. I've got to give that a go, but I really enjoyed his last one with the, the one with jogging on it. I love that album. Um, who else do I listen to? People like the Unthanks. I listen to a lot of um, kind of, for want of a better word, modern folk music. People like the Unthanks. Isn't that an oxymoron? Mo modern, modern folk music. No, I don't really, know. I suppose. Yeah, well, folk are around now, so yeah, I suppose so. Yeah. You know. Um, who else do I listen to? I, but I go back in time, you know, I go back and sort of try and trace an interest in something old that maybe I didn't, you know, didn't like first time around. Like, I have tried to get into Dire Straits. I still haven't penetrated that one. <laughs> I cannot get into Dire Straits. I keep trying because I'm a bit curious as to, that, you know, what it is that what I want to know, you know, that Mark Knopfler magic, but I haven't got there yet. Um, I have, however, decided to go back and discover a lot of um, 80s metal because that's something that totally passed me by and I listened to a lot of punk which you know had a lot of similarities at the time um, Judas Priest are my favourite at the minute um, and my son keeps playing me Saxon mm -hmm. They're pretty good but I like it I've, I've, been, in, I've been enjoying a bit of Judas Priest I'm, you know I've always liked Metallica anyway but who else uh, Renaissance British prog rock with a folky inflection kind of band I, I love them at the minute I'm trying to collect all their vinyl I love that Renaissance, yeah, that's that's enough. Of that, There's quite a few there. Yeah. What is Alison singing? And are we here? Whew, Anything like she know. likes. Would you like to know? Uh, well, no, I'd like, I, I would like, like to collaborate to with her again. Hence, and we all really enjoyed doing that. There you go. Got there again. She's a good egg. Yeah. Why is she singing? And are we here? Oh. I don't, she's not singing anything. She's she didn't used. To, la la she might be in her head, but she's she doesn't. La la she, yeah, she doesn't. She kind of sings very syllabic things, but they're not really words. Ambiguous. You know? Yeah, Can ambiguous. Make a, like abstract words, I suppose. Yeah, you can make up your own. Yeah. what she thinks she's saying. Yeah, it's like you know, saying... track nothing left. She's not singing nothing left. It, that's just what uh, I think it sounds like. Yeah, yeah, it sounds like she's singing it. Yeah, yeah. I don't think she is. Bring out your dead. That's what she's singing. Yeah, bring, bring out, out your, your dead. dead. Yeah, there you go. Wherever, wherever, it's wherever you want it to be. Out your dead. Can we get? Can we get more live archive sets on YouTube, please? Yes, of course. When I've got more time. Um, there is, I believe, a New York '92 hanging around, waiting to go. Maybe we can get that out soon. Oh, that that's um, that would be good. Is that on a film of? No, no, no. This is just dat. all my my collection of dat. dats. Mm. Uh, you know, um, yeah. There's still a few to go. There's still a few um, knocking around. So don't worry. We can get them get them fired up. Just been a bit busy sorting out the live set over here. Um, yeah, but we can get more on YouTube. How do you decide the titles of, Al of tracks or decide? albums? It just comes to you, doesn't it? The album just, titles and yeah. tracks. Something happens. Like the, the optical delusion came to me uh, listening to. I was listening to the audio book of um, how to change your mind. How to change your mind is it? Michael yeah. Polon. Michael Polon. And um, 
it was something that came up in that. And I just stopped and thought, oh, got to write that down. And then, you know, re-listened to his bit of chapter and then investigated it. And yeah, but it just struck me as 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 the right word for this album when I heard it. You just That just kind of happens. You did that with Snivelization, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. I seem to remember. Yeah, you came I in one day it. and said, I've got that title for the album. I stole it off of Russell Hoban. Yeah, well, you know, great, everything's great poem. borrowed, isn't it? You should check it out. Then. Borrowed. Yeah, borrowed, borrowed right? Yeah. yeah, so they come or they don't. The good, well, I mean, the green album, the brown album, we were going along that tack just by colours. It's like, but it caused a lot of problems in administration on the record label, didn't it? Because they both were... Well, they were actually untitled. Essentially untitled. They were untitled. We wanted to do all of our so, albums untitled with you, you different utilitarian colours. sleeves. Yeah, so um, it looked all nice when you got ten of them all in a row. Yeah. But yeah. that didn't happen. We, you know, we got two, didn't we? Got yeah. Two. But then and we that. kind of discovered John Greenwood and thought, oh, come on. Yeah, and do that, and yeah. Snivelization was born. You know, it's nice to have an idea and then just change it and throw it out the window <laughs> at some <laughs> point. <laughs> During the live gig, how the visuals mixed? Is it an improv mix on the fly or something else? It used to be. Well, there is, improv, there is it? well, there is a lot of improvisation going on with the with the set footage. There's parts. It's a bit like our songs, isn't it? I, you know well, now. Visually mixing, but the but the visuals have been made specifically for each track. Yeah, but we now we've recently. Um, you always used to be just improv and mixed it on the fly, we, you know, like Phil says with special, you know, certain images for certain tracks. But recently, we've been sending the MIDI triggers because we, you know, they they can't just run it and expect it to go because our songs always change length and things like that, and things happen at different times. Um, so we send the MIDI triggers now that trigger a section of the video so that it will run and then it might loop or they might do something if we carry on and, and go beyond, you know, what's there or whatever. Other way, I don't think it ever goes beyond what's there because it will loop, you know, and, and do things like that. Um, but it is basically triggered with MIDI now, uh, you know, big set in big sections so that um it's in time. It, it looks yeah it looks yeah. in time it's all, all, well, it's, uh, in time, it's, all yeah. it's all very professional now isn't it actually yeah so yeah. You're, so we're visually we're mixing the video as well we're we're triggering the video it's yeah in. Right. put in for that <laughs> yeah there you go how did the pentaveret come about oh yeah. um the box essentially the box as the theme tune yeah that was that was uh, i think one of the writers sat down with mike myers and they were doing a bit of a brainstorm about um, what the theme tune should be, and the box came up because the the writer, you know, knew it and liked it. And apparently, Mike Myers was jumping around, going, "Yeah, that's the one, that's the one." And then from there, uh, Tim Kirkby, the director, asked us to do the score, and it, so it was real easy, wasn't mm. it? It just came about yeah, up the road. like that. He just lives <laughs> up the road, yeah, and he's lovely. Go on to mm -hmm. the next. Question, Axe, any further scores? But I've just well, finished just one. with Tim Kirkby. I've just finished a score <laughs> with Tim Kirkby on a yet-to-be-aired TV series called Entitled. Um, not Untitled. <laughs> not Untitled. No, no, that, that would be my Obviously title. album. Yeah, that would be my title. That's a soundtrack to Yeah, yeah. But um, no, it's called Entitled. I've just finished it. It's one of my favourite scores that I've done. I'm really pleased with it. Um, I, I, yeah, I played everything on it myself, including all the scratchy bad violins and cellos and then sampled it and made sense of it afterwards but yeah it's, it's a real mixture it's a, a lot of good fun sampling going on there um yeah i'm looking forward to that coming out i was really pleased with that questions but, <laughs> more. so we got to the point where they've asked me everything <laughs> asked us everything anything more, more, more. The next question is: Did you get to meet Angelo Bad Badlamenti? Yes, we did. We did meet, meet Angelo Badlamenti, Bad didn't we? Funny. Yeah, I was talking to my friend last night about the beached. Yeah, that was it, wasn't it? It was on that soundtrack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you ever make it in the film? I couldn't remember. Did it? Yeah. It was a bit. I can't remember when we did. It was. It was we kind did. of like it was at the end of the. Wasn't it the the music at the end? The I remember we did. We did like thing. some dance floory sort of track. Yeah, yeah. With, uh, it's not actually in the film. It's on. No, it was a the dance floor remix. I think it comes at the end. 
Oh, with, with I think um, Leonardo, we sampled him up, didn't we? When Leonardo DiCaprio, yeah. Yeah, that one. Yeah, that was quite good fun, wasn't it? It was, yeah, but we met him down at, <coughs> pardon me, Air Studios. He was oh, recording the, the boys' studio. choir for the for the film. He's a lovely guy. He, he was, was really fantastic, nice. Fantastic, yeah, fantastic, good fun. larger than life, brilliant. Just like, yeah, just do this and do that. Really made you feel relaxed. And oh, yeah. He, he was great. Yeah, he was very, yeah, he was really good. He's film welcome. If you have to choose a cocktail, what would it have in it? Or do you have a favourite? Yeah, I've got a favourite cocktail at the moment, which is a, a mezcal sour. Oh, that's nice. quite nice. Yeah, I made them at Christmas. Really nice. Mm. Lime juice, egg white, mezcal, and that's, that's pretty much it. Yeah, I think my favourite is from... In Brighton, actually, the Flint House do one called... Bro they do their own cocktails. They've got one called bronze i think which comes with it's and it is kind of bronze it's got chili it's got this kind of gingery it's it's, Ooh, spicy. it's, it's really nice but it's got yeah. like a huge stick of ice in it as well oh which is, that sounds know. pretty good yeah well, so you get about that much liquid then <laughs> well you could always have two you know <laughs> although it's, you, you'd have to be careful it's this it's quite potent right but that's that's my favorite at the minute yeah i'm not sure what else is in it Pina question Clard around Paul. two o'clock is always a winner. Quest, question for Paul. Oh. Should Phil shave his moustache? Uh, well, that's up to Phil. I mean, I think minute. he makes him look sad sometimes. It's like, it draw, it, it, you know, <laughs> I am sad. I've, I've, I've seen, I've seen pictures of him recently without the moustache, and I think he looked happier. No, I, think I haven't got a top lip. But if you do that, if you do that, what? you know, on your face, it makes you look sad, you know, so... Well, yeah. I'm looking for the maybe you should just grow. I'm like looking this. for the sympathy if vote. He, if he just grows it like that <laughs> instead, it, that it look. I was trying to do the uh, what's he? Uh, Paul Dyke from uh, Oliver. What's he called? Oliver Reed. You know yeah, yeah. when he's. Uh, yeah, he looks sad as well. No, what with the mutton chops? Yeah, yeah. I, well, that's I can't that grow. Want? Yeah, but I can't grow. Them. Doesn't come out. So I've, I've got. Should one minute. Could, should Phil shave his moustache and Phil should Paul grow one? You can't though, can you? I'm not really. I, I think actually, I, I might be able to now. I don't know. It look like one of those little it's 15, got of... 15 year old bum fluffs. No, I of. think I actually think it's coming through now. Finally, right. age fifty five, I could grow like a moustache. Like a bit of a pencil one, like a spiv. yeah, yeah, I, like a spiv. Yeah, or like the um, oh, what's the guy? The, Arthur the, Daly. No, uh, the guy who used to be in Doctor Who. Um, the the I, I wanna, No, 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 he's not Doctor Who. Um, the, the, the brigadier, oh, the brigadier, you know that kind oh, of was lovely, little pencily yeah, kind of, it. you know. I think you would. Yeah, squadron leader. Type yeah, thing. yeah. I think, I, but I, it's got but my beard has bits weird, of ginger it? in it as well. Would it? Yeah. What's that for? Yeah. To do. Should Paul grow it? Well, we so should I grow one, Phil? I don't think you can. That was the answer. Okay. So that was a challenge, really. Yeah, it? yeah. I mean, right, yeah. Well, wait, well, let's see what November brings. <laughs> With the orb in mind, have you ever been mistaken for someone else? <laughs> well, you know, I did pass some people the other day. I said, oh, bicep will let themselves go. Jesus. <laughs> <You know>. <laughs> <laughs> but... Um, <laughs> No, that didn't happen. Well, we have, I've been, really when happen. I've been DJing, I've been asked a couple of times, can you play Little Fluffy Clouds? Oh, yeah, we've definitely been mistaken for the orb many times. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to play, well, we Chris were playing yeah. Little Fluffy Clouds, that was it. Yeah. Um, and, someone um, mistaken for someone else? Uh, I mean, someone in a soft play in the Isle of Wight once <laughs> thought I was the singer of a local band, which <laughs> I thought was odd. But um, I don't know, I can't remember his name. Um, but apart from that, I was no. Machete. Is it what's he called? <laughs> Mexican, uh, no, it doesn't matter. Um, no, so not really Hulk no. Hogan. Okay, you get Hulk Hogan, <laughs> yeah. Well, it's quite obvious, isn't it? Like a cheap laugh, really. Um, yeah. how did the Golden Girls come about? That came about because we remixed our friend Mike Hazel's track. Um, what was it? It was the, the Artful Dodger, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, Pied Piper or something, wasn't it? Or, was that, was that I, the that Artful Dodger, Pied Pipers, one of those. Like that, yeah. No, I think it was the Artful Dodger. Um, was he? What, the original? I don't know, you've no, made me doubt it now. It was an Artful Dodger came you know, out. If you're, if you're listening, Mike, please give us the answer. Yeah. Um, but then it got, the, the remix got 
bought up by um, R&S Records, who wanted it. And so Mike said, oh, look, if it's just a remix, let's form a new band. That's three, you know, called the, and he, he picked the name Golden Girls. I loved it because it was yeah. such a macho label. Sort of, was it Belgium, wasn't it? it was like, yeah, yeah. No, 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 yeah. What, what's it called? I can't remember now. Yeah. Renard? No, not Renard. No, the label. What was the label? Who did you mention? R&S. Oh, R&S. That was it. Yeah, so yeah, oh, let's, yeah, I did actually quite enjoy the Golden Girls at lunchtime as well on the show. It was a show and I thought, let's just do it. Call it the Golden Golden Girl to see if he still wants it then. He was fine about it, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's Phil Collins got... sampled in Times Fly. I asked my lawyer. I don't know. Honestly, I can't remember. No, I don't know. I don't. I don't and think Philly. 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 I don't think Phil oh, Collins is sampled in Times Fly. But I, obviously, for 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 um, no, he's not. Legal reasons, no, I couldn't tell not. you if he was. No, he's not. No, he's not. He's definitely not. No, he's not. Any Which other samples bit? you Which can bit? tell? Yeah, I don't. I don't even. Any know. other samples you can tell us about? No, not really. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> Not really. No. <laughs> no I think Any other samples you can next. tell us about? No. That's the point of the Wild West, it, as it was in the 90s, when you could just about get away with sampling things. Do your children like your music? Well, I brought them up to say they don't get their pocket money. Let's say yes. So, yes, they do like my music. Yeah, I think my children like my music. I think they're, they're intrigued by it. They listen to other things, you know, ranging between classical music and Saxon, as mentioned earlier. Um, and and even um, cocteau twins, so you know, um, they've they've been well brought up as well. Can you explain? Uh, how you, your... you did. You answered that one. John Greenwood artwork. Yeah, he's he's a friend. Uh, I I I once slept on his living room floor for six weeks in um, Dalston when I first moved to London, um, and got to know him quite well <laughs> then. You know, but yeah. That's how we know. How do you feel about Reflex Records? I feel good about Reflex Records. <laughs> I, yeah. How do you feel about Reflex Records? Keeps. <laughs> don't don't. I don't know. How do I feel about Reflex Records? Yeah. Did you like them? I'm not too sure. Yes. Too, I don't know That's what kind of Richard's about. label. Oh. Um, uh, you know, like that he did with. Someone else. How do you feel about they don't, it? I don't think they're around anymore. Right. Oh, I think they did some rather spiffing releases good. in their Pretty day. Good. Pretty good. On your Radio 1 residency, you played a lot of Warp Record artists. Who are your faves? It's got to be, for me, Plaid, Aphex Twin. Nightmares and Wax. Nightmares and Wax. Um, all the old school ones, isn't it? <laughs> You know, um, unique three. They're all the ones we played, really. On Sweet Exorcist. Yeah, all that on the first. Unique three aren't on Warp, actually. Oh, they are. They should be. They sound good. like they should be. But um, they're my favourite artists on Warp. That, those those old school that all that like nineties sort of UK techno that they came out with was just mind blowing. Brilliant stuff. Is it true the drumming in the box, box was, was one of the on. lions in Trafalgar Square? No, was on but I can line. tell you where that rumour comes from. Um, probably one of us. But um, no, it's uh, it, there's in the box three, the slow version on the single that isn't on the album. There's a sample of a big old statue in... Um, Liverpool Street train station, isn't it? And the gardens out the oh, back. Yeah. There's that big statue, and we were wandering around there, and I started slapping it, and that is the oh. one of the bass drums. And how did that get twisted to the Fabulous Square? Is that the thing we did with Extinction Rebellion in or something? How did it Dunno. get to well, be one of the lions? sample the lion in Trafalgar Square. Yeah, yeah. That's an idea there. Yeah. Box, I could be the box four coming on. Yeah. Did you have time to go raving or clubbing in the 90s? Where I didn't have time to, to do anything else. Yeah. <laughs> what else are you going to do? You know, um, where did we go though? You know, okay, drum club, mega dog, Tonka, Mutual Brighton, Waste, Mutual Waste, Coco Club in Brighton. Uh, both the last two in the Zap Club. Um, oh, there's there a lot of my Plink acid Street. housing Plink here. Street was another one. That was another Plink one. Street. Plink Street. Ooh. Uh, Ooh. Where else did I used to Ooh. go raving in the nineties? But warehouse parties in Shoreditch. Uh, people used to. Have... Almost squat parties, really. Well, yeah, warehouse. Yeah, yeah. squatted. Old lots of squat, yeah, lots of big squat East, parties, yeah, um, like spiral tribe squat parties and that kind of thing. 
Um, favourite synths and why? Oh no. I've got too many of them. Look, I'm a synth collector. Can you see around this room? Favourite synths at the moment. I think my SH, uh, not S, I've even got the name wrong. Oh, System like... 100 is one of my favourites. Uh, it's just, you know, I love those old Roland synths. I, you know, they're, they're some of my favourites. I'm trying to get some Roland Mojo back in the live set. So I'm auditioning lots of, of the old um, Roland synths to, to see which one I'm going to take. But really enjoy the SH-101. Very basic, very simple, but flipping fantastic at what it does. Um, don't get me started. I'll keep going on, you know, but Jupiter 8. Love that. Um, Macbeth M5N, that's also one of my favourites. That's one of my big workhorse synths that I use all the time. A, yeah. a little and the Quantum, a modern synth. I'm really, really enjoying the Waldorf Quantum at the minute. Synth sampler does all sorts. A cheeky little, um, sort of cheapest, sort of cheapy, is the base station, Novation. It's not Novation that base station. About, did I say yeah. that? Oh, I think that's a brilliant little thing. Base what? station two, in fact. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's three hundred fifty quid. Are they much? I don't know about They're, that sort of price. I think, but you know, I, that's great. That's yeah, I would great. say if you're looking for a first analog yeah, mono would, synth would and you don't get... have one, that there, there is a really good way in. Yeah, really good, and it'll stick with it's you. The way it's laid out. Yeah, it's we really, still use really them simple. all the time. So yeah. all these fancy synths that I've got, don't take that any mojo away from them. No, yeah, it's one of my little go tos. I missed something then. Hang on. No, uh, we did that. What will, dance music, what will dance music be like in 20 years? Ah, I, well, it gets, seems to go round. Well, where are we now? We're, at the, we're, we're kind of recycling the 90s now. That was around that's 30, so years 30 years ago. Years. So I reckon we'll be, re in 20 years' time, we'll be back to the 80s, maybe? Or will we... No, oh, that's 30 years back. No, we'll so be in back, 20 no, years' we'll be, time, we'll be, yeah, like we'll be back years. to the end of the noughties, won't we? Yeah. You know, so yeah. whatever it was sounding like then, that's probably where we'll be. That's, I have to that's... just wait another 10 years and we can repress the optical delusions, I reckon. Yeah. If it goes to the 30-year cycle, no? Is that right? Or my maths? Yeah, no, Forget your it. maths is, is, is not terrible. working there. No. Um, I, think I, think we'll be, I think we'll be ready for wonky. I think it's my brain. All oh, right, okay. Yeah. But uh, what advice would you give to an artist who's just starting out? Buy a base station too, is, yeah, is one thing that we said. Start. Bust out of the... Uh, your laptop, if you want to, you don't have to. You know, it's that's the thing. It's not really about the equipment. All this stuff around here is great to have, but be, you know, you make some of your best music with with very little. You know, when you've got very little stuff, you kind of you know, necessity is the mother of invention and all of that. And and I think you come up with some really really cool ideas by having to stretch what you the limited stuff you've got. Don't ever think you haven't got enough stuff because you have as long as you've got the ideas and the the determination to go for it and get it out there live don't look for perfection either just think that's there that's good enough I'm, i quite like that that'll do move on you know that that's it's very easy say. to get caught up with this technology and thinking oh i must have that other oh if i have that then i'll make a great tune then i have that you get caught up no, in like, yeah, that's not having the true. latest thing having the late i mean they're all great but you do it's not honesty it's not a necessity at all in fact having too many synths like me does you tend to go in and you can't actually decide where to start it, it, it spreads it too it spreads your ideas too thinly you've got to focus so i would say you can focus best with less stuff can you tell us your love for the mmta did you build all your tracks on them or move data from a door um originally built the tracks on them and just took them live and jammed with them um you're looking for one aren't you yeah there is, there is one that? over there somewhere but um and then when we started moving on to atari and things like that we liked them so much from before that we kept using them live because they were brilliant for playing live until ableton came along and allowed you to then do the same thing but using you know like controllers and a computer you can do the same thing as you could do with mmt8s um, so we've moved on to that now, but we did used to bounce, you know, send what we wanted out to MMT8s. It was quite a laborious process, but it meant you could really jam live in a in an exciting way. So yeah, that's, that's why we loved them because they were really good, flaky as you like sometimes, but what they did was was excellent. <laughs> oh, 
was the most challenging part of your career? Working with my, my brother. I, I knew you were going to say yeah, that. That's what like, I was laughing. It's hard, I isn't it? That. I knew you were going to say it's that. It's a hard thing to do, isn't it? You know? <laughs> but we've we've done it. We've managed. It. We've got through. Well, we've, we've got had our through bad down, times and, and downs. We've had our good times. Downs, we've got there. You know? it's, it's hard. You know, you, you, you ask anyone with a, a a brother in a band. A challenge, you know? challenging part of your career. Yeah, or a sibling in a band. You know, imagine being the Nolans. Ah, oh! <laughs> you know, can you imagine how crazy that is? Or the cause, You know, <laughs> crazy. Crazy stuff. <laughs> How's your live concert experience, audience interaction changed for you personally? In a lot, of, well, it hasn't really changed. Really. It hasn't, it hasn't changed. Really changed nothing. Uh, it hasn't really changed the audience interaction. Yeah, you get kind of experience. nervous and excited before because you're kind of excited. You want to play this your music loud at people, and people are all smiling at yeah. you. So there's a definite. You go on stage. It's a nice symbiotic thing, and. That kind of interaction just changes with each audience, doesn't it? And and you you feed off them, and they feed off you, and it's a it's a it's a lovely thing. Yeah, we've got we've been blessed with some beautiful beautiful fans, and generally, yeah, generally speaking, it's always a wrong in there somewhere, but mostly, yeah, beautiful fans put up with us splitting up, rejoining, splitting up, or not again. Yeah, I'm seeing my mum this weekend. Is there anything you'd like me to tell her? The truth. <laughs> Tell your mum the <laughs> no, truth. No, don't tell her the truth. What are you saying? What are you saying? Just tell her you love her. <laughs> if well, that could be the truth. But, yeah, no, maybe don't tell her the truth. Actually. No, I there's wouldn't. A, there's a what is the truth? It depends what you hide. It depends what you mean by that. I was best left. I just mean be honest with don't your mum. Be honest with your mum. Don't you know. poke business. Yeah. <laughs> Comedy gold. What's that mean? Am I missing out on something there? Comedy Gold had to include it. I'm seeing my mum this weekend. Is there anything you'd like to say? I think that's... Oh, from, um, it's like a Satan. That's a Satan reference. Hey, mum. Uh, yeah, yeah. If you see your mum, it's like that. Yeah, Penny's just Didn't dropped. even think of that. No. I guess... I was taking it too seriously. Could tell her Satan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, we will consider having a live vocalist on stage. Um... Which reminds me, we have to ask Jason. I forgot. Got to get. <laughs> We're playing round the corner for him, not Nottingham. We'll ask him. We'll ask him. I've got a funny feeling he might be on tour though. Um, I, you know, I we've got um, we've got Lily coming on stage with us in Brighton. Yeah. Um, from Penelope Isles. Uh, uh, she, she's local to Brighton, and Stephen coming back off her holiday to come and do it. Brilliant. Um, you know, favourite food, Yorkshire pudding. <laughs> Yorkshire pudding and peanut butter sandwiches. Not together. <laughs> that would be wrong. But, you know. And, um, oh, well, here, here we go. You know, a, a, a decent, a decent, you know, curry. A new curry. Yeah. 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 I like a good Massaman curry myself. Oh, that's nice. Who will support you on your UK tour? I don't think we can quite announce that yet, but we Ooh. know. We know, but you don't. You can ask us anything, but we won't necessarily give you the answer. We're just that's the about, only we're one. Just the only one. That. Last question. We're just about to confirm that. Yeah, we're dead. So, you know. But I will check say out your favourite social media, um, you know, social media feeds and that kind of thing, and you should find out within the next couple of days. Yes. But we're very happy with our support. Oh, say. Really, very happy. Really, really happy. Yeah. Yeah. Supports. Supports. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, everybody. Yeah, thank looks you. looks like a wrap. Was that your favourite food? <laughs> nah.